I'm Rais Muhammad. I'm the founding partner of RM Warner Law, and today we're going to talk about e-commerce law. So what is e-commerce law? Well, e-commerce law is a combination of a variety of different areas of law. For example, the FTC Act, the FDA, advertising rules, intellectual property, copyright law, trademark law, uh, internet defamation law, Lanham Act, unfair competition. E-commerce entrepreneurs need to be aware of all of the different areas of law that their particular business touches. And in e-commerce law, the difficulty is figuring out the knowledge base that you actually need to draw from in order to have adequate counsel to guide you through these issues. So what are some common issues that e-commerce entrepreneurs face when operating online? Well, my personal favorite is internet defamation and fake reviews. So as an e-commerce entrepreneur, you need to be aware of two things when it comes to reviews. Number one, is somebody writing reviews about your product or service that are false and defamatory? For example, is a competitor purposefully deceiving the public by writing reviews that are not authentic, that don't reflect the actual purchase of a product, and that are done just to target you as a competitor? The second aspect of reviews that's really important to understand as an internet entrepreneur is whether you are writing reviews that are either false and defamatory about a competitor or are fake reviews that you've paid somebody to write for yourself. Paying people to write reviews is usually not okay according to the FTC. In fact, you have to disclose that you were endorsing somebody or somebody's endorsing you for a review. The FTC issued a new rule. In fact, they have 50 pages of what they call, they call the dot-com disclosures that outline all the different precautions you need to take as an e-commerce entrepreneur. That includes the hashtag ad disclosure, for example. Another common issue that I see when I'm advising e-commerce entrepreneurs is the lack of proper terms of service and privacy policies. Let's face it, if you don't have adequate disclosure of what your terms of doing business are or ad adequate disclosure on how you use your consumer's data and whether you're sharing the data and in fact what you're collecting and how you're sharing it, how you're storing it, you have a problem. So oftentimes I review terms of service if a client even has them and determine whether they are up to date accurate and fairly describe the uh, client's product and service. And of course we want to check for adequate product disclosures, indemnifications, warranty, representations, refund policies, cancellation policies. Um, sometimes you may need a sales order form if you're a software as a service producer, for example. So these are all things that vary depending on what kind of business you have as an e-commerce entrepreneur, but definitely one of the most necessary. Going along with privacy, privacy is a huge problem today and there are maybe a hundred different regulations including individual state laws and federal regulations that apply to privacy specifically. How do you know which one applies to you and how do you know that you're in compliance? Well, you should have an e-commerce lawyer who knows privacy review your privacy policy. Another common problem that e-commerce entrepreneurs frequently ask me about is how they can get their credit card processor to stop holding back more charges than they're contractually allowed to do, or stop canceling their account. Let's face it, if you can't get paid by customers who have already paid you because the credit card processor is holding your money, it's a gigantic problem. Oftentimes hidden in that 60 page contract that you signed, there's some legal recourse and it could be an arbitration provision that allows you to take a processor to arbitration, or it could be something that the credit card company is just doing unilaterally uh, completely against their contract, and sometimes it can even be fraud. Another common problem that we hear about is issues with Amazon seller accounts being closed. So there is something you can do about this problem. Usually the problem relates to suspicious activity or uh, not adequately servicing the client. And Amazon cares a lot about client service. How do you get your account reinstated? Well, number one, we look at your dashboard and determine whether there is com communications from Amazon that you need to respond to. Second thing we do is determine whether Amazon's closure of your account was unilateral. And sometimes we can use arbitration as a means of getting you the recourse that you need for an Amazon um, account closure. One of my favorite issues to talk to clients about is FTC compliance with deceptive practices online. What does that mean? Well, FTC basically tells us, in a nutshell, that you can't have deceptive practices as it comes to 
advertising your product or service online. And that touches a variety of different industries, including, for example, the nutraceutical and supplement marketplace. So everybody wants to tell a consumer how nice their product is, how shiny it will make their hair, how long it will make their nails grow, how wrinkle-free it will make their skin. The problem is you can't make health or medical claims unless they're substantiated, and you can at any time never make deceptive claims. How do you know if those claims are substantiated or not? Well, you need an e-commerce lawyer that is experienced in reviewing FTC and FDA compliance requirements to tell you that those particular advertisements are not going to work. Finally, for those sole proprietors out there that are just selling their products and services perhaps from their garage or from their bedroom, make sure you set up a business entity to protect yourself from personal liability. You should always do business through a corporation or a limited liability company so you can distinguish personal liabilities from business liabilities. If you have more questions on e-commerce and e-commerce law, visit our website at rmwarnerlaw.com.